This is Cialis. Similar to Viagra, this little pill was made to keep your midnight soldier in full salute. And I'll be taking one every day for the next week. You ready? Oh, I'm ready. You might be wondering why such a young, strapping, devilishly handsome, epitome of health like myself would need Cialis. I don't. No, really, like I swear, I really don't. You see, recently the use of Cialis for purposes outside the bedroom is becoming more and more popular. Cialis. 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 Even daily is becoming pretty common for many men who do not have erectile dysfunction. We've got the fitness community taking it for skin tearing pumps, the longevity community taking it for improved cardiovascular and metabolic health, and we can't forget all the olds taking it for their prostate. So this week, not only should my one-eyed wonder perform like a thing of legend, but I'll be a beast in the gym and pissing like a goddamn racehorse. Let's go. My doctor over at Merrick Health gave me two different kinds of pills. This one's a troche. Or is it a troche? Troke? Troche? Troche? Honestly, no one really knows. It's kind of like the Worcester sh Worcestershire sauce of uh, medicine. Whatever they're called, they're these little candy-like things in the texture of a starburst. You just put them in your mouth, under your tongue or your cheek, and they get absorbed through the aura mucosa. We also have orally dissolving tablets, or ODTs for short. The idea is the same, just this texture is a little bit harder and it dissolves under your tongue, kind of like a mint. The thing with daily use is it's taken at low doses. A low dose of Tadalafil is around 2.5 to 5 milligrams. This ODT is 20 milligrams in whole, so I'll be taking a quarter for five milligrams. 20 minutes later. Okay, that worked. Really good. But how exactly does this improve our taco warmers? Time for science shit. The active ingredient in Cialis is Tadalafil. Tadalafil works very similarly to Sildenafil, which is the active ingredient in Viagra. The main difference between the two is how long they work. Tadalafil has a half-life of around 17 hours, while Sildenafil has a half-life of around four. These medications are called phosphodiesterase 5 inhibitors, and as you may have guessed, they inhibit an enzyme called phosphodiesterase 5. But from here on out, let's just refer to them as PED5 inhibitors. To understand this any further, we need to dive into the science of how that flesh weasel actually gets hard. First, we produce nitric oxide, which enters the tissues of that sin stick and increases something called cyclic GMP. The cyclic GMP causes smooth muscle relaxation. Relaxation? Fucking A, that's the hardest thing to say. Muscle relax... Relaxation, not relaxation. The cyclic GMP causes smooth muscle relaxation and allows blood to fill it up. But then there's this PED5, which comes in, degrades the cyclic GMP, allowing blood to leave your little tickle badger and for it to shrivel right back up. But when we take Cialis, the cyclic GMP isn't degraded, so that blood keeps pumping and so can you. Another way Cialis can lead to optimized bone sessions is via increasing testosterone and androgen receptor sensitivity, meaning more testosterone and a better response to it, and that leads to better smash. Uh. Today I'll be taking Gorilla Mode Nitric, which has a clinical dose of L-citrulline, which is going to increase the production of nitric oxide, and this quarter of a troche, or five milligrams of Cialis under my tongue to make sure that nitric oxide doesn't get broken down. The way Cialis increases pumps to your muscles is the exact same mechanism that it increases pumps to your baby blast. Okay, yeah, this shit is working. Not bad for a uh, TRT physique, half natty. So even though I've been loving the pumps and the sour cream rifle and the gains in the gym, this stuff doesn't come without side effects. The most common side effects people run into are headaches, which are actually caused by increased blood flow to the brain. And this is thought to be a common cause of all headaches. In fact, some medications called triptans work to reduce blood flow to the brain. Nasal congestion, which again is caused by increased blood flow to the nasal passages. When blood flows through there, it narrows the passages and then you feel stuffy. And heartburn, because just like in your whole hungry crotch crocodile, the smooth muscle relaxes and this opens up the esophageal sphincter. When that esophageal sphincter is open, acid could come up, i.e. acid reflux or heartburn. It's not an exhaustive list, but those are the most common side effects that most people would run into. I tend to be pretty sensitive to these agents. I've had a kind of stuffy nose for the past few days, a mild headache, and I do feel a little bit of heartburn after I eat. Funny story on side effects. When I was in undergrad, my friends and I went out drinking. I met this girl and I was pretty confident that I'd be bringing her home. I'd also ordered some Viagra from a really sketchy Indian pharmacy and it was 100 milligrams. In case you're wondering, that's a shit ton. So anyways, when the night's wrapping up, I think I'm for sure bringing this girl home, so I pop that Viagra and I'm already wasted. Well, it turns out I was more confident than I should have been because she didn't want to go home with me. She just went home on her own. But later that night, I'm sitting at home alone, in bed, wasted, spinning. My face feels like it's gonna pop due to all the blood flow. I had the worst headache I've ever had in my entire life. I was tempted to go to the hospital because I thought I had meningitis. Literally felt like someone stabbed an ice pick right through my eyeballs. The pain was so bad, I couldn't stop throwing up. The moral of the story is don't count your chickens before they hatch. She probably doesn't want you, bro. Another benefit to the use of Cialis is its effect on the cardiovascular system. When it comes to cardiovascular health, one of the main components is the lining of our arteries called the endothelium. The goal is to have an endothelium as smooth as a baby's ass. If it's smooth, then cholesterol can't get stuck. And if cholesterol can't get stuck, it can't form plaque. And if it can't form plaque, you can't have a heart attack. Nitric oxide is essential for the health of the endothelium. Because of that, numerous studies have shown that daily Cialis use can help to improve endothelial lining and cardiovascular function. 
Not only have my erections been godly and pumps legendary, but I'm waking up to pee a lot less too. Cialis is actually FDA approved for benign prostatic hyperplasia, big prostates, and reduced nocturia, peeing at night. So if you're getting shit sleep because you're waking up to drain the bow-legged swamp donkey, Cialis might help. By reducing prostate size, it could also improve your urine flow. Taking you from this, to this. Day six, I wanna talk about metabolic health. And nothing says you're smart like a bookcase full of books behind you and an olive tree. So let's talk here. The hallmark of metabolic health is insulin sensitivity. And that term gets thrown around a lot, but what exactly does it even mean? So bear with me, cause it's time for a little more science shit. So what happens when you eat specifically glucose is our blood glucose rises and our pancreas responds by producing insulin. Insulin's a hormone that signals to our cells, hey, let this glucose in. But our cells need to be sensitive to insulin, meaning when our insulin signals to the cells to let the glucose in, they do so. But some of us become insulin resistant, meaning those cells aren't responding to that signal that insulin sending. And therefore, blood glucose remains high and it wreaks a ton of havoc throughout our entire body. If your blood glucose remains high enough for long enough, you get our good old friend diabetes. And before you know it, your main hobby in life will be driving a scooter around Walmart. I buy they toilet paper from y'all's Walmart all the time and I wanna start a lawsuit on them. But if you're insulin sensitive, you'll be jacked and have a reduced all-cause mortality, meaning you'll die less of all causes, including but not limited to death by Walmart scooters. So at the end of the day, you wanna be very insulin sensitive and Cialis has been shown to improve insulin sensitivity in numerous studies. All right, it's day seven. I just finished my workout in the 95 degrees Texas fall. I forgot to bring my camera, but I did grab this last set of calves on my phone that I'll let play while I ramble on here. I'm still feeling a little stuffy and have a little bit of a headache. I definitely like the effects in the bedroom and the gym. And while I definitely appreciate the added benefits of boosted testosterone, increased androgen receptor sensitivity and improved cardiovascular function, I don't think it's something I'll be taking daily. I personally just feel way too side effect prone, but I've coached thousands of guys, yes, literally thousands of guys who absolutely love this stuff and take it daily. I've actually had guys tell me that they like it better than their TRT because it gives acute, noticeable effects. But for me, I think I'll just be using it as needed when I want a nasty pump or I want to surprise Victoria with a weekend marathon session. And if I were you, my recommendation going forward would be to hit subscribe.